So for this video, we are going to be using UV resin in a needle tip bottle to create this fossil effect. Let's go. Right, we are back. Going back to my previous video, um, the effect really got my brain ticking. I mean, really ticking as to what can be done with this effect. Now, and specifically with UV resin. So, <laughs> I mean, the possibilities are pretty endless. <laughs> I was trying to get my words out then, but they just weren't happening. So, one of the ideas that I've got, I mean, I'll explain some other things that you could try, was actually, what got me thinking is, is what else could be kind of sunken into a piece like this and have that depth. And it got me thinking of fossils. And these in particular, what are they called? I can't remember now. Crustaceans. Um, you often see these in, in rocks. Now, I had a go at freehand last night. And only by trying something do you then realise kind of where you've gone wrong. So as I come out, I needed to go deeper with the UV resin. And we can do that by just drawing with a needle tip bottle. So we'll put our UV resin into our needle tip bottle. It would help if you've got some black tape so that it's not curing inside the bottle as you're going. And as we come out, we can kind of make this a bit thicker. We could draw the line to begin with and then go over it again. So what you could do, I'm gonna cheat for this video just to show how easy it can be. I've got an image on my phone and you could find images, lots of different images and you could just lay your mold over the top. You've probably seen me do a similar thing with the Moana stone way back when I started my channel. And you can then just trace into the mold the design. I've just got to hope that my phone doesn't ring <laughs> whilst I'm recording. So I haven't got any black tape, so I'm going to improvise with this pair of torn gloves that I have. Hopefully it'll work. Just cut off one of the fingers, which are intact, and I can then hopefully protect my... looks a bit funky but I can then protect my UV inside the bottle as I'm drawing my design. And you don't necessarily have to use the color shift pigments for this. You could go for a more stone effect with a mica. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I'm just gonna show you kind of what you can achieve with this effect and what you can do. So let's get started. So for this one, I'm gonna use my handy flashlight um, UV torch because it's it's much easier than keep moving my lamp, but you can use a lamp It, it really doesn't matter um, But I'm just going to use mine just for ease So I'm just going to take my UV resin And just squirt some into my bottle and These bottles are easy to clean out with some isopropanol Afterwards just give them a flush out and you can use them again. Doesn't matter if some dry inside, some dries inside the bottle, as long as the needle tip of the bottle is kept clean, we can use them again. So we'll screw on our lid, put over the protective tip, and then stand that upside down just to allow all that UV resin to come down towards the needle tip ready to go. Now bubbles, we don't really want any bubbles. So we will need to pop any as we go. So you can see I've just rotated my phone around just to line it up. You might find it easier to just print this out, but I find you can pinch and zoom and get it to the right size. But you'll find that your phone kind of activates through the mold. So just be careful. You could even 
kind of if you've got molds similar to this already you could even just use clear resin bond that into the piece and then brush with mica powder to give it the same effect really but with this you don't need a mold so I'm gonna skip a lot of the video but I'm just gonna start in the center and just show you what you do so I'm just gonna squeeze my bottle to get some of the UV resin flowing doesn't have to be exactly the same as the image but just trace it and cure bit by bit you could use a needle to kind of get the precision points as you go but just try not to shine the light onto the tip of the bottle because it will cure as you're kind of using it and you don't really want the pieces to touch you want to keep them separated just to give a better look you really can achieve a lot with this effect just by drawing the design into the mold so as you work your way to the the larger pieces you can kind of dime dime <laughs> Dome the UV resin a bit deeper. Any kind of points we can sharpen up afterwards, but we do want some depth for these larger pieces. So once you have your design, we can get rid of the phone. And hopefully you can see the depth that I've gone to with the with the bigger chunks if you're not if you still want to go a little bit deeper then all you do is just go over the top but just make sure it doesn't run down so you can just make it a bit deeper just by rubbing more essentially doming it again and if you want sharper details you can just use some pliers to just pinch the nib of the bottle a little bit finer just to get some really intricate points and lines with any design that you choose to do and the good thing with something like this is if you go wrong you can just peel a section out and start again right so what I've decided to do I'm gonna go in with a grey to begin with just with a paintbrush just a tiny amount on the end I'm trying not to make a mess but I'm just going to go in between the gaps and around each part and then we're going to top it up with a seashell mica and hopefully we'll get some nice shadowing and a more natural stone effect but I am making this up as I go along the only attempt I have done at this was this attempt last night And you could do this in coasters, you could do this, this is what I mean about the possibilities of doing this kind of stuff. You really can take this to a whole other level. And I have to, again, thank t and Art, because it takes an artist to come up with something which inspires so many people. And it's really important also as an artist to show gratitude and, and my thanks because without that inspiration other techniques and ideas would never happen. Well they would but only by watching T and Art's water drop technique did this then happen and it may it may not turn out great <laughs> but it's the experimenting and, and working with things until they do come out the way that you want and as always massive shout out to my channel members and to anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks thank you very much for supporting my channel
and supporting me obviously this is my full-time job right I don't want to go too crazy with this I just wanted I just want to blend it in a little bit better around the edges I think I went in a little bit too heavy on this first area bristles full enough so I'm now just going to brush in the seashell we're also going to use that to fill it up as well but I'm hoping I can blend it a bit better by using my brush also and I think that would do I mean Again, I'm not very good with micas and stuff like that. I don't know whether to top it out with the white. I don't think a black would work with this. I want it to look like stone. So I'm definitely going to go with this seashell, I think. So I've just mixed up some of the two-part collab resin. Ignore the bubbles. I'm, I'm so excited. I've, I've kind of rushed everything. <laughs> so I'm just going to tap some of my... I've got excess. I know I've mixed up too much resin. Um, again, I was too excited. I'll just use my mold that I have on the side for overpours. I just don't want too much to fall in at once. Again, I'm rushing it. I know it's got to shake a lid. And just mix all that in. And a bit more. And my brain again is thinking that you could do a dirty pour, so you could mix up two colours and, and you'll get those natural kind of rock veins running through the stone. But I'll leave that one down to you guys to play around with. But look at that colour. That is really, really nice. And in it goes. And I can't wait to see these results. Hopefully I won't get any bubbles in between those gaps. I will see you for the really exciting part. Right, we're back. You can see some extra stuff in the moulds. I just tried that dirty pour idea just to see if they come out veiny, but I don't think they have. Still really nice though. What I did was I just separated some of the seashell um, colour that I used and mixed in some black and it actually turned gold which I didn't realise would happen so I have sped things up on my heat mat again wow that's actually really cool maybe these are going to be the highlight <laughs> yeah. as always give the video a thumbs up drop me a comment and if you haven't subscribed Hit that button for me and if the results are good please share this because I think this could be a, a bit of a game changer and I was thinking whilst this was curing I think you could also push in clay and mold it around what we've drawn into the mold and then wait for it to dry and put it out I think I'm not sure the clay might bond to the resin, but you could pick that out afterwards, I think. Again, it's just the way my brain is working. Oh, please be good. Wow. Look at that. So I think what I'm going to do, I wish I'd put some more of the dark in there. But I think what I'm going to do is just top coat this with some UV and just see if it makes much of a difference. But look at that. That is a game changer. And there we have it. I could have done a better job with that top coat. You can see some tiny little bits of UV resin where I didn't clean around it before I poured in. But there you go. I'll definitely be doing more like this. Right. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.